Al-Mu'min, the remover of fear. How many things could have gone terribly wrong today, but didn't? Even a small decision, like taking your next step, has some element of doubt. Al-Mu'min has two meanings. Linguistically, the first is to believe. The brothers of Yusuf, they tell their father, after they lied to him about a wolf eating Yusuf, وَمَا أَنْتَ بِمُؤْمِنٍ لَنَا وَلَوْ كُنَّا صَادِقِينَ But you would not believe us even if we were telling the truth. مَا أَنْتَ بِمُؤْمِنٍ لَنَا You don't believe us. The second meaning is to grant security. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَآمَنَهُمْ مِنْ خَوْفٍ And made them safe from their fear. In Surah Quraysh, recounting the favor over Quraysh. And so the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-mu'min includes two things. Number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who fulfills his promises. Allah doesn't break his promises. And we know that Allah promises the believers with forgiveness and mercy and paradise. And Allah promises those who do evil that they'll be punished. Does that mean that every person who does evil and falls under that threat will be punished? Or are there some promises that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes that he does not fulfill? You have to understand that there are two types of promises. There's a promise of reward, what's called a wa'at, and a promise of punishment, which is called a wa'id. It's always praiseworthy to fulfill your promises of reward, and it is blameworthy to not fulfill them. However, fulfilling a promise of punishment may at times be praiseworthy, and at times it could be praiseworthy to not fulfill it. For example, you have a father who has a son who's not doing well at school. And he says, you're only doing poorly because you are not applying yourself at all. You're always wasting your time with this or that. So. This is what I'm going to do. This semester, if you get the marks that I know you can get, if you get me straight A's, then I'll take you to that adventure park that you always wanted to go to, right? That's the promise of reward. But if I even smell the scent of a bee, not only will you not go to that adventure park, but you're going to be grounded, you're not going to be able to go anywhere for a month. So the father has given both a promise of reward and a promise of punishment, both. Now, let's say his young son is motivated and He's working harder than he's ever worked. And every time his father sees him, he sees him exerting more effort than he's ever exerted before. His nose buried in a book. He's always working on his homework. And at the end of the marking period, the boy comes rushing home with glee. He's so excited with his report card. And when he opens it up, his father looks and he sees A, 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 straight A's. The child is bouncing off of the walls. Baba, we're gonna go to Adventure Park. And his father looks at him and goes, just kidding, sorry. I was only kidding about the adventure park. He's broken a promise of reward. Is that praiseworthy or blameworthy? Obviously that's blameworthy. There's no scenario where breaking a promise of reward is praiseworthy. But let us reimagine that the boy is coming back home. He's super excited and his father opens it up and he sees two A's, four B's. Now the father had swore that if he smells the scent of a bee, that child is going to be grounded. But imagine he looks at his son and he says to him, you know what? I know that I promised that you would be punished, but I just want to let you know, I'm still going to take you to Adventureland and I'm proud of you because you worked harder than you've ever worked before and you actually applied yourself. He still broke his promise, but he broke a promise of punishment. Is he praiseworthy in doing that? Yes, he might be. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises those who commit sins, when he promises them punishment, it's a conditional promise that he may fulfill or he may not. And he's praiseworthy in not fulfilling it in mercy and forgiveness. The secondary meaning of al-mu'min is the one who grants amn and aman, the one who grants safety and security. And so it's a name to be pronounced on the tongue of anybody who's feeling fear. Safety is one of the greatest blessings that people forget to appreciate and pay attention to. And yet, were it to be removed from any society would cause massive displacement and relocation. The Prophet ﷺ says, whoever of you wakes up safe in their dwelling, healthy in their body, with enough food for today, then it's as if they have the world rolled out for them. The Hadith is in Tirmidhi. So after waking up, the Prophet ﷺ mentions the blessing of safety. Everything else that we do, everything that we gather is useless without safety. War is the great negator. I am from Sudan. And in the past year, the city of Khartoum has been emptied out by war. An image that in my wildest dreams, I could never have imagined. There was a time in my life growing up that I thought, and I would have believed 100%, and I had reason to, that Khartoum was the safest city in the world. Giving rides to strangers in your car in a city that large was normal behavior. Murders were unheard of. Armed robbery almost non-existent. But when war breaks out, everyone leaves all of the retirement projects, all of the assets, all of the homes, everything that they were building over their lifetimes or over multiple generations that they hope to pass to their children or their children's children becomes erased. 
and their entire existence, their dreams, their history, their families, their stories becomes enveloped by a single word, refugee, a person who's seeking refuge from violence. The gift of safety is one of the greatest gifts that we can experience. That you can go about your day going to work or school and not worry about the people you left at home. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا أَنَّا جَعَلْنَا حَرَمًا آمِنًا وَيَتَخَطَّفُ النَّاسُ مِنْ حَوْلِهِمْ Do they not see that we made Mecca a safe sanctuary while people are being taken away all around them, people are being snatched up all around them? In falsehood do they believe or in the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do they disbelieve? As we look at much of the ummah and we see conflict and occupation and see proxy wars and see the tension and oppression, if you and your family are in safety and security, then make sure to be grateful. Make sure to be grateful. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that blessing. And so finally, how do we interact with this name? How do we interact with the name Al-Mu'min? Give security to others. The Prophet says in a hadith that's reported by Bukhari and Muslim, he says, Wallahi la yu'min, Wallahi la yu'min, Wallahi la yu'min. By Allah, they don't believe. By Allah, they don't believe. By Allah, they don't believe. Three times the Prophet is saying, he's negating perfection of Iman from this person. Who is it, Ya Rasulullah? He says, He says, the one who their neighbor does not feel, he does not yaman, he doesn't feel safe. So the Prophet is using similar wordings, Iman and Aman. That person who their neighbor does not feel safe from their evil. How can you expect aman from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment through your iman? How can you expect safety from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment if your neighbor does not feel safe from you? And so the Muslim neighbor is supposed to be the best neighbor. And I want you to ask yourself this question. If I were to survey the neighbors of the Muslims, our masajid, our Islamic centers, what would they say? Do they feel safe from our evil? I hope so. I don't want to bring up the negative, but a memory that always stayed with me Growing up in New York was a, an elderly Italian woman who was a neighbor to a masjid that was just a small house. And so she lived in the house next door. And every Friday at 12 o'clock, she would go and she would guard her driveway because Muslims were gonna start parking there as they tried to get to Juma. And I remember one time I was walking to the masjid, I was a block away and I could see this man because he was rushing to Jum'ah, because the khutbah started, he actually blocked her driveway. And he got out of the car and he was rushing to the, and it was the moment that she had been preparing for. So she started screaming and she's like, hey, hey, that's my driveway. And he was like, okay. And then she said, I'm gonna call the cops. And then in that moment, he became defiantly arrogant. And he said, well, call them then. And he walked into the masjid. In that moment, we failed to protect our community's neighbor from our evil. And the Prophet them said, that person does not believe whoever's neighbor is not safe from their evil. So if you want to experience security and aman from al-mu'min, then make sure that you grant security to others, that people feel safe from your evil.